What's going on friends? Logan Myers here for Cinefellas.com. Tonight I'm going to be doing another comic review, the brand new edition, Volume 5 of John Carpenter's Tales for Halloween Night, which just released. Really excited to talk about this. I'm a huge fan of all the Tales for Halloween Night, the, the other four editions, other volumes. Uh, this is an anniversary edition. It's been five years. The first one came out in 2015. And if you guys aren't familiar with the first four books, you should definitely check those out. Go pick them up and support Storm King Comics because we love them over there. Ant Sandy and crew always putting out great comics, uh, great storytelling, really beautiful artwork. Each series they put out is you know completely different. I reviewed uh, Vortex and I reviewed Twitch series, the Tales of Science Fiction series uh, by Storm King and John Carpenter and really love those. Tonight we're going to dive into the Halloween aspect, my favorite part, but what better collection of stories can we get you know for the Halloween season than the brand new John Carpenter's Tales for Halloween Night. So let's talk about it, shall we? The first story, Dead Man Walking, is actually written by John Carpenter, and the artwork's done by Derek Robertson and Tony Avenia. Really beautiful artwork in the first story. It's kind of like a zombie. Uh, it's at a funeral ceremony. The zombie kind of shows up and takes the casket off into the woods, and it uh, leads up to the rest of the story. We find out the character of the zombie, what happens to him exactly, and why he's taking this casket. Probably not a great way to get a casket during a funeral ceremony, but uh, the first story really kicks off this series of 12 stories, and it's really great. And uh, first story is written by Uncle John Carpenter, the man, the myth, the legend. The next story is Lambs, uh, written by Amanda Diver, and the art's done by Kat Stagg. She does artwork on a few stories in this book, and I really loved her artwork throughout. Um, she's probably one of my favorite artists in this series for sure. The Lamb story, it's really interesting. It's like a family um, and there's things that happen at night, like blood shows up on windows and things like that. And uh, you're trying to figure out what exactly happens, but they really dive into this really scary storyline of you know them being locked inside having this curfew and something that's lurking on the outside that they don't know about but maybe it's not lurking outside maybe it's lurking inside so they really created this really excellent story the second story out of the 12 and i really love the artwork a lot of the color schemes that uh, cat stags used in this story uh, really beautiful really well done and uh, one of my favorite stories of this book the next story cast is really great with these teenagers having to do with uh, music and like technology and doing it with YouTube. And I don't really want to go into too much detail, but this one, they had some really funny aspects to it. And again, the artwork was done really well in that story. Uh, the next story is One Scene Last. There's a really cool story as well taking place. Uh, this couple is like on vacation. They're in a cabin. Something happens in the woods and something that's lurking out in the woods that uh, they don't really expect. And uh, it's pretty bloody and gory, and it gets really good at the very end. Something that you don't expect as a reader. Another one of my favorite stories in Tales for Halloween Night, uh, Volume 5. The story is called Andromeda. It definitely has like an invasion of the body snatchers kind of vibe going for it. Uh, you know, with these two teenage girls. Having to do with technology, the, their cell phones are getting some weird text messages. You think there's some sort of like alien species taking over because like their parents are acting really weird. They're trying to figure out what's going on exactly. And all it all kind of goes back to that aspect of technology. So it was a really cool story, uh, very innovative. It reminded me much of like a Black Mirror episode. So it was really cool and really well written. So the next story in the book is The Birds. I thought I was going to have like an Alfred Hitchcock kind of vibe to it, but it really didn't. It has to do with this couple that rents his house. They have the option of buying it. They find out from like the real estate agent that, you know, previous families had died there. So the couple finding out about all these deaths that happened in, in this house, you know, they're really questioning if they want to still live there and, and buy the house and a whole bunch of creepy shit happens. I don't want to get into too much of that, but it's a, another really great story that uh, makes you feel uneasy. Another really great story in this book is The Ghost of Steeplechase. The story is written by Frank Terry. Uh, it takes place in Coney Island. Uh, basically, it's an old theater. It used to be for like sideshows back in the like probably the 20s, 30s. Uh, back in the day, you know, people would pay money to come see the bearded lady and all those sideshow attractions back then, but it closed down and uh, figure out what happened to this place, why there's been so many businesses that have been using this building that used to be a theater and find out like related to ghosts and ghosts really messing with local businesses and people. And that's why nobody's ever really lasted, you know, in this place. And it's really interesting, really cool story how everything plays out at the very end and really awesome writing uh, by Frank and then again artwork by Kat. She did a really great job in this as well. And the next story was a throwback to like the Twilight Zone, the Outer Limits, really cool like 1950s retro vibe to it, really old school and I love that about this story. This story is called I Hate the Light. It's written 
by Andy Price. He also did the artwork, but it's very cool because it gets black and white towards the end of the, the story. And I don't want to say too much because I want you guys to enjoy this story as much as I did, but it really had that old school, like, black and white Twilight Zone feel to it. I, fe I felt like Rod Serling was going to show up. And the next story is called The Absolute Last Halloween Horror Night. Uh, it was really interesting because it was like a director and actors at like this carnival and they're like dressed up as, you know, Universal Monsters, Pinhead, Freddy Krueger, just uh, zombies, just all these different characters. They're all like struggling actors and things like that. The director's like telling them what to do and like you can't touch people walking through this place, this attraction, and they gotta make money. And things don't turn out the way they expect it to because other sort of creatures kind of show up. Uh, photographers like hiding out in the trees and seeing what's going on exactly this attraction. And it was really awesome and something I did not expect and I love the way it ended too. And it totally had like a creep show vibe to it as well. Next story was Gathered, it was a ghost story, it's really creepy. Roadside Cross is like the story about this motorcyclist and this accident. And the artwork in that story is really well done. It reminds me of living in Las Vegas, driving on uh, my motorcycle late at night, in middle of nowhere, and what things could happen while you're out there. You're basically in the middle of nowhere. Um, most of the time you don't have cell reception, so it was really eerie vibe to it and something that I could relate to living out in the Wild West and being <laughs> going out late at night by myself. So it really plays tricks on your mind. It reminds me of old times like that. So that was something I could really relate to in this book and I absolutely love that story. And the final story in the book is called The Storm, written by Aunt Sandy Carpenter, a fantastic writer. A really great ending to this book, this volume number five. And it's one of the better written stories, in my opinion, in the book. And John Carpenter's A Tale for Halloween Night, volume five is really fantastic. Each story is completely different. The artwork's completely different. They all have different tones, but I think the artwork really works alongside the narrative of the stories. You know, you're reading these and seeing the color schemes and color palettes they're using to build this creepy atmosphere. It all works. For this amazing book, you know, for the Halloween season, it really brings back that feeling of being a young kid reading spooky ghost stories around Halloween and not being able to sleep at night. They really capture that perfectly in this book with all these different stories. John Carpenter's Tales for Halloween Night, Volume 5, is a book that you don't want to miss. So do yourself a favor and pick this up. Uh, support Storm King Productions, Storm King Comics, John Carpenter, all the great writers and artists that were associated with all these books. Really fantastic company, great group of people. You should definitely go pick this up at your local comic book store. You pick it up online wherever you guys read your comics. So overall, I'm giving John Carpenter's Tales for Halloween Night, Volume 5, a four and a half out of five John Carpenter hair pieces. Did you guys check out volume five? What did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? What's your favorite story in the book? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit subscribe. This is Logan Meyer signing out from Haddonfield, Illinois. Oh, home sweet home. Until the next review on 31 Days of Horror. Cheers! <laughs>